So Tuesday the 1st of August, the first day of autumn, and we are on the road again. That's off. The cows are in behind that fence, in behind them trees, and we're about to go down the road back to where, close to where they were before we came up here, to separate out bones. So they've been two days in where they are now, and we have lovely, lovely grass for them to come onto on this first day of autumn. So from now on in, I have to start thinking about winter stockpile, as in I'm gonna have to grow grass for winter now. Come on, you coming? So there's a bit of a lane here you can see, so I kept that lane out from the hedge because I wanted to, when they were moved in, to be able to graze along the hedge. So that's the idea of this little gap here. Come on. So there's 24 in all now. What way is this? My reel is at the wrong end here. But it should be okay. Let me just put a knot in this first. Does that make sense? Uh, no, I won't do that. I'll just let that down. They're going to follow me out to that gap there, take a right turn, head on out to the main road, and walk on down a mile. So. All is quiet here now. No mad panic with them. So as soon as I take down this wire, I have to run. Because a lot of them might cross the wire, and I hate them getting caught on the wire. Um, actually, no, this is the wrong. What's wrong with this stupid string? No, what I have to do here now is, and this is bad training, my spool is at the wrong side and the end of this wire is over there. So I have to, uh, let me pause this a sec. Okay, so I know what I'm at now. I'm just going to have to pull the wire back this way and make another lane. The end of the lane is not until here. Now, basically they could go anywhere again now, like they're going to, only they good manners. So I need to get this off. This is a bit awkward now, because I don't normally do this this way. There's the end of it now. Right, okay. That's fine, I'm out now. Here we go. Okay. All right, guys, let me stay out in front. So here's our gap. Mad for road detours. Right, okay. They can go out in front now. Let's do a count. One, two, three, four, five, six, is it? Seven, eight, nine, ten, and I don't know what's going on. I just got confused there. Yeah, they're on in it, more or less. Come on. Young bull, young bull Ella. And the last two calves. That to me sounds about right. Come on, no. Look, at don't you know, there's always one. Come on. I better go over this side. Look, I've gone the wrong side. Always, always, always. I'll go around to her. Come on, lady, the gap, the gap, the gap. Good girl. The gap. Have sense, will you? You've done all your life. Now, single-handed, I have help out on the main road. I'm going to go drive behind these. My nephew's out on the main road. He'll stop them from going left. And I have a man on the right that'll guide him 
back to where they need to go. Right, I'll be back. So in last position we have the black heifer, our black short horn heifer, who I believe is in calf to Ruby. She is the one we witnessed being bred and she didn't come around. So here's the deal, we are the 3rd of August, they've been back down in here for the last two days and what I have done for, hang on, what I've done is very simple really to be honest, I kind of should have explained it more in the last video but the Roany Bull the red roan he bull, not this one, but the other lad, I call him the grey roan. That's his mother there, and I have them held on the far side of this fence for the next few days. This lady is due to come back into heat. She's 17 days since she was exposed to Ruby. So I have her held back with this bull, pedigree short horn, who is not related. So that is what I'm doing so we have now let me back up up the field what we have now is our red rowan bull in with the rest of the herd who he's not related to out from a few of his half sisters that could already be in calf to Ruby and the other half of them is a completely different breed so that is the chance I'm going to take this year. So what I have done here at the minute is I had them on this upper side and I've taken down the fence that was there. They're not one bit hungry, so they have access to the lower side now today, which I normally, I could, or sometimes I have done, is left that fence in and put them down there altogether. But I don't mind on a hill situation to allow them to come back up to the top to lie down for the evenings because when you have them lying down here or say held up down there the fertility that they're leaving out behind themselves with their urine and their dung can never make its way back up the hill so I don't mind them bringing fertility from below back up here while they sleep because as the rain comes it washes it all down that hill anyhow so on a hill situation I always like to let them come back up to the high point so that is the carry on there. So a little walk through the cattle. Um, all is looking well and quiet. So I remember when that white lady was in heat, I thought this lady might have broke, but I wasn't sure. So I don't know about her, but this lady definitely was. She uh, came bull on the same day as the white shot on. Now whether Ruby bred her or not, I don't know. We'll know very soon. Three weeks ago, I remember telling me myself or mentioning that the herd was very calm. But little did I know it was the calm before the storm. 
So they all kind of broke on the second heat. So will they break for the third heat? I don't know. But if they do, we have our bio here who's going to do the job. Let's just take a little walk around him and see how he's getting on. So these are not one bit hungry. They haven't even looked at the fence that I opened it. Now, Bully, I was very fond of his father. I was lonesome after him. He is 15 months now, that boy there. He's a better bull than his father. A nicer colour as well. His father was red and white. He's a red rowan. But um, if you can breathe them better than the parents, that's always a good sign. He's super quiet. I never hear him calling or roaring. But he stands well. He's a leg at his corner. And for a short turn, he hasn't a bad end either. He's good broad shoulder and he's a lot of growing to do. And a lot of filling out. He got two bags of mail in his lifetime. But he's going to work now this year. I'm very happy with him. He's not going to be an amazingly big bull, but I don't want him big. I don't want him leggy. He's got nice short cannons, which tells me he's a, an easy fleshed grass genetic bull. You don't want long leggy Holstony looking legs like this cow here. Now that lady is roaring because she's not happy, but she'll get over herself. So I have to go away today now. There's lots of grass. This is what they've left from being on this for 24 hours. You can see there's loads of grass on it. So this is ideal now. This is almost like stockpile grass. I won't be back here until October. And if it never grew again, I'd have enough to do them another day. So, I'm very happy with that. What do you think, Belle? Both coming on nicely. So a closer look at our bullock as well. This lad is a 50-50 hybrid. Uh, obviously we know his mother is the is Belty Moore and his father then was the red and white short horn. I'm very happy with him now. He's thriving mad. We'll have more of that kind of thing next year. There's the red family. So that is the story for now. I might as well close down this video. And I might post it. Or add to it tomorrow. Today's Thursday. I'll probably post tomorrow, Friday. So this is the other boat. Let's have a look at the other fella. This fella is the son of the skinny Claire, I call her. He's that little bit leggy like his mother. But... He's a nice bull too, he just hasn't got the same kind of style, in my opinion, as the Red Rowan. But he will breed with this lady if she's not in calf already. They most likely will have a white calf. He has that uh, rowan -y gene and she has two copies of the rowan -y gene. So uh, the calf will take a copy from her and a copy from him and most likely be uh, a white calf. But if but if not, that'll be interesting. He's super quiet as well. He got a little bit upset yesterday when uh, we separated him out. Like the cow. She's due to come bullying. If she does come bullying, he'll be happy enough with that. So this is... Um, this is Belle's mother. Is Belle getting out to you to drink? I'm sure she is. She's a whore for going under the fence. Let me see you. Are you sucked? Who are you calling for? Ah, uh, you're all right. She'll come to you when she's thirsty. So yeah, we'll talk very soon. August the 4th. What day are we? Friday. Now there's a bit of a commotion going on here. I'm after leaving in the little black heifer. Maverick Etta, as I call her. She was keeping Ruby company in the shed for the last few days. Now the news on the Ruby front is... Oh, settle down with me. Ruby has gone back to Clive, and the story with Ruby is he's going to get the season off 
Um, he's going to get the farrier, is it? The hoof man to look at his hoofs, get the vet to check him out, check his semen, and give him give him this season off. And he has himself a new bull, and we'll see how he gets on now next next season. So there's still hope for Ruby. Now speaking of Ruby, that white cow there is 18 days today and no sign of her cycling just yet alongside the Hereford lady, the red white head with the horns, she's due to cycle any day now as well so I have I have that lady separated out from her from her calf which is following around this black lady now at the minute it's all a bit mad so I'm going to hang on till they settle down and then I'll move them and set up a have manners girls, I'll set up a paddock and get them on grass, fresh grass. <laughs> so this is a, this is as excited as they can get, I suppose, these days. So all is quiet. Out from the road. I better go away because I have a trailer on when they see the trailer they go mad. So yeah, nothing else to report for now. I'll put this together and I'll post this evening or this afternoon. Yeah, so for now we'll say good luck and goodbye.